What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at a brand new video for you guys today. So, happy Tuesday by the way. We're going to check out this video. Uh, top 5 Facts. 1992 LA Riots. This is very um, relevant to what's going on in our world today. Um, this is from WatchMojo.com. So I'll leave the link in the description. Check their channel out if you like. But let's get into it, shall we? In about a 3, 2, 1. That's loud as hell. Often referred to as the Los Angeles Uprising, the LA riots of 1992 represented a brief hiatus from civility and the rule of law. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. It was In today's shit installment, up for a long we'll be time. providing you five insightful facts about a famous historic event, the LA riots of April 1992. We've all seen the pictures of Los Angeles police officers beating a man they had just pulled over. Like all things race yep. related in America, this event is complex and multi layered, and to fully understand it would take a lot more than just a few minutes. Nevertheless, we hope that this video can at least serve as an overview and introduction to this tragic chapter in history. Los <laughs> Angeles Police Chief Darrell Gates looked at the tape and said he thinks assault with a deadly weapon will be one of the charges. Number five, the riots were sparked by the outcome of the Rodney King trial. We are not sure they that the police is there up. to protect us. On the evening of March 3rd, 1991, 26-year-old Rodney King was pulled the over after they a high-speed chase that with bad. police that along the Foothill Freeway insane. in Los Angeles. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stacey C. Kuhn, not guilty. A confrontation with officers followed. When King resisted arrest, he was punched, kicked, stomped America, on, and right? brutally attacked with tasers and batons by four members of the LAPD. The beating was caught on tape by local resident George Holliday, whose footage would then be broadcast on national television, sparking outrage across the country. In fact, the footage of the attack created such a media circus in LA County that the ensuing trial of the four officers led by the Los Angeles District Attorney was moved to neighboring Ventura County. Mm. A jury of nine white, one Latino, one Asian, and one biracial male resident acquitted all four officers of assault. One member of the crowd at the Simi Valley Courthouse equated the verdict to, quote, lighting the fuse to a bomb. By having this verdict, what these people have done, they lit, lit the fuse oh, to a bomb. That's John Number four, much of the Korean Rocky. community was left to fend for themselves. The riots following the King verdict escalated so quickly and aggressively that LA County police were unable to contain the violence. What the hell? This lack of resources, combined with the complex socio-cultural and racial issues of the early 90s in LA, left Korean communities in an extremely vulnerable position. When I saw that the LAPD did not get their act together on the second day, and that they were telling Korean American merchants in Koreatown to evacuate, that's when I decided to go and ask the Korean American merchants to, to defend themselves. According to the LA Times, the perception this of this ethnic group as a quote-unquote quote, model minority to. fueled attacks from mobs of other minority groups. For their own part, some Korean business owners took matters into their own hands Crazy. and armed themselves with rifles and handguns to defend their livelihoods. Although lives and businesses were lost, Koreans now look at the riots as a turning point for Asian American communities in Los Angeles. Is this America? We came this country to want to have uh, some kind of uh, established some American dream. The violence prompted the formation of activist organizations such as the Association of Korean American Victims. What's more, the isolation they felt throughout the riots forced an expansion of Koreatown, geographically and culturally. For many Korean Americans, their identities in America were reborn in April of 1992. Number three. The riots cost the city over $1, one billion, billion dollars in damages. God damn. The LA riots began just minutes after the King verdict was announced. From the LA County Courthouse to downtown. Sorry about that, y'all. I had a phone call from me, mom. Let's get back to the video. Looters destroyed storefronts and burned businesses to the ground. That's a lot this of chaos money. would continue for five Worth more the days before the US Marines and National Guard were brought in to restore order. By this time, there had been 55 deaths, 2,000 people injured, and over 11,000 arrests made for assault, looting, and arson, resulting in a combined total of over $1 billion in property damage. It was the most costly riot to date by over $600 million. While the city's coffers were taking a beating, gun shop owners were seeing more people walk into their stores than ever before. More you than think? three months after the pandemonium ended, gun sales were still at an all-time high as first-time gun owners worried about another riot situation developing. Number two, King's second trial had two black jurors. People, I, um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? The state-led prosecution of the officers who aggressed King was controversial from the outset, and not just because of the sensational video evidence. 
The lack of any black jurors in the trial just added to the public's perception that systemic racism had prevented justice from being served. In February of 1993, the United States Department of Justice responded to this outrage by seeking grand jury indictments of the four officers for violations of King's civil rights. In the ensuing trial, there would be two black jury members. It had only been one year since the riots, and the city of LA was still recovering from severe property damage and turmoil. There was no way in the world that any jury would acquit Look, a young all of the defendants again. Two of the four officers were found guilty and sent to prison. In Bye -bye. a subsequent civil suit against the city of Los Angeles, King was awarded $3.8 million in compensation wow. for his injuries. We, the jury, find the defendant Stacy Seacrone guilty. Yeah! Number one, the riots exacerbated tensions between other minorities. Of the course. relationship between African American and Korean American community I, hasn't improved as much as we would like. Cases of police brutality and excessive use of force usually create a rift between civilians and law enforcement. In the LA riots, however, the rift was split a number of ways. A mob of black people were reported to have dragged white truck driver Reginald Denny out of his truck at an intersection and beat him to within an inch of his life. Ooh. My right window broke in that time. And I was extremely frightened. Guatemalan immigrant Fidel Lopez was also pulled from his vehicle, robbed, beaten, and spray painted with black paint. Elsewhere in LA, before the riot started, a 15-year-old black girl named Latasha Harlins was shot and killed by a Korean store owner who suspected Harlins of trying to steal a bottle of orange juice. Upon trial, the store owner was found guilty of manslaughter, but was handed a reduced probationary sentence that mm. further exacerbated tensions between blacks and Korean Americans. 65% of all the stores vandalized in the riots were Korean owned, according to estimates Damn. from the LA mayor's office. Analyses of the entire event have concluded that while King's verdict is what sparked the riots, the inner city conditions of segregation, economic despair, and lack of opportunities had been fueling a deep frustration among minorities for some time. So what do you think the legacy? Question, sir, from Watch Mojo. The legacy is that it's still going on today. Like it's 2020. This video came out in 2016, and flash forward to four years later, we are still doing this. We are still going through this as we speak. Uh, there are more lives, you know, that have been lost and stuff, and you know, by the unjust of some of these police officers and more people are coming out again to riot. I remember there being some uh, riots and looters and stuff when uh, the whole situation happened with Mike Brown in Ferguson. And uh, I just want to give my opinion on this today. Um, I gave my opinion on my Instagram if you have, if you saw it, you know, it's on my page, you know. So some of y'all might not agree, but oh well, we all have different opinions and you know, it's whatever, but um, how I feel about the whole looting is just like I understand people are mad. I'm ups I'm still I'm still upset about it. Like I'm tired of us singing this same song, looking at the same cycle of these policemen doing the same shit to black men and black women. It's just like and other minorities as well, but you know, you definitely see it amongst black people, right? So many stories. Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner. Tamir Rice, Ahmad, um, George Floyd, um, Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor. It's so many. Like, you know, it's so many that has been out in the news and then so many that was just swept under the rug. We didn't even know, we wouldn't even know about it, you know, unless somebody else um, had put it out there, you know? And I, like I said, I'm tired of seeing this cycle repeat itself, right? But at the same time, people out here looting, Stealing shit, breaking shit, burning shit, hurting other people. Ask yourself, what the hell is that doing for anybody? You know what I'm saying? What is that doing for anybody? Like, how is that going to bring justice? If anything, that's going to bring more of these policemen out to get riled up and have and get to shooting y'all. I'm not I'm not agreeing with that. No, but I'm just making I'm just making a point. Just like with the National Guard, you know, them bringing that out in those times in the 90s and then them doing it now like that shit. It, it, it just like startles me, you know, because, you know, you, you do research on certain things martial law, <laughs> in the National Guard and everything as such. And it just makes you like, wow, it just makes you think like, wow, you know, this this same type of shit that was going on back then is happening once a damn again. The rioting, the looting—like seriously, I, they had saw they had 
a picture of some guy coming out of Target with a box of Legos. And for people out there that want to like get defensive about people like me that have an opinion of like you know looting like what is the point like what is that going to get us to and for y'all to get so defensive it's like not everybody agrees with destroying shit you know because there's a lot of people out there they can't afford to go to these expensive stores you know they can't afford to go to places like whole food stores uh well hell some some even uh walmart or target any stores as such they have to go to like dollar stores you know dollar general stores anything like that because a lot of people you know out here they can't afford you know the big shit you know they can't and people and some of these people have kids you know and they have to sit up in here and struggle live out on the street possibly because y'all want to sit up in here and burn shit you know they can't they can't go to their local drug stores or their dollar stores hell family dollar whatever right because y'all want to tear shit up y'all want to burn shit like seriously it literally I saw one picture, I believe it was in LA. It was literally looking like one of the damn purge movies. Like no, no cap, no cap at all. Like I said, yes, I do agree that it has gotten attention. I do. I won't, I won't deny that it's gotten attention of those who will sit here and deny, you know, um, racism and everything behind it. Even the offspring of racism, colorism in our own communities you know what i'm saying so for all you people that want to be in denial of that you're contradicting yourselves you will sit up here and say colorism isn't real because somebody tried to argue with me i know i'm got gotten off topic real quick but i'm just saying um somebody has gotten to it with me because i was basically talking about and you know putting it out there about colorism and how it has affected black people especially I've, I've heard about it in other communities as well but especially in the black community I'm only speaking because I'm black so um, I don't really I've never really experienced it but I have heard a lot of like colorist comments towards other people around me that may have been darker than me hell some even lighter you know what I'm saying uh, but like I said you want to say colorism isn't real but then you'll be like, oh, team light skin, team dark skin. You'll talk about, oh, I got good hair, oh, I got bright eyes, and oh, you know, team pretty girl, or oh, nappy boy, pretty boy, Chris Brown. But that's for another conversation, that's for another video. But um, yeah, this is just, it's just amazing how this keeps on repeating itself. Hopefully, we, we can get to a point where you know, we can just have some more common sense and like hopefully things shall change. You know, this year, you know, has been, it's been something. <laughs> it's been a lot of something. And uh, November, it, it kind of concerns me because we all know election. We know who's in the White House over there. A damn fool. That's all I got to say. I'm gonna just be quiet on that. That's it. But this was an interesting video nonetheless. And, uh, it just goes to show you how, like, and just like with this whole looting stuff and then how people end up getting hurt or worse. And then that just brings everybody in this race war. You know, we're kind of going through that once again. And it just sucks because it's just like at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, we all bleed red. And underneath all of this skin, when everybody is, you know, oof. Not, you know, trying to look forward to that anytime soon, hopefully. Um, this is all skull and bones. Like, we all, this is all, I mean, unless you're an android. <laughs> ah, that's for another video, too. Or from another universe. They live? Huh? huh? Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get too deep for you all, but I mean, hey. When you read things, it makes you think. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot. It's a lot. But, um... This is an interesting video, a little history lesson, I guess, you know. But with that being said, if you guys made it to the end of this video, please hit the like button. Comment below what you guys think about all of this and uh, how these riots from back in those times, how they affected the times today. What do you guys think about everything that's going on? Do you guys agree with the, the looting? And do you think that's going to get us to a better point as far as the justice system and just, you know, human rights, you know, as it is? Hey, you guys, let me know your thoughts on all of this as a whole. And uh, if there's anything else I can react to for you guys, let me know in the comment section as well. 
Hit that subscribe button, follow me on my Instagram, hit that notification bell so you guys can only have a video up and loaded. I'll see you guys in the next one. Taylor Rain, I'm out.